We bought a new home thinking that we would be protected through the warranty program. It's not major. So far, I like it. Other than cheap crap. And we were really excited to, to come in and to, and to own our own home. You can smell it. It's already starting. Little do we know that there's going to be more problems with a new home than there is with a resale home. This is really upsetting me. Oh, yeah, baby. Mike Holmes. On the money. Decided now, we got to take it all down. My comes I love you. Me too. Unacceptable. <laughs> I love my job. So you think buying a brand new home, everything's going to be perfect. You're not going to have a problem. As a matter of fact, what I'm seeing in the last many years is more people want to buy a new home so they don't have problems with contractors. It's valid. Everyone's scared. We thought we'd buy a new home to avoid all those problems that a resale home might have and picking up other people's problems, <laughs> and well, that didn't work out. <laughs> you buy into the brand new home, and it automatically comes with a two-year, five-year on the foundation home warranty program. Now, this is designed for the homeowners. This is there to help you. But I'm hearing way too many stories that state the opposite. Hello. Hello, sir. Hi, Gary. How are you? Mary Jo. Nice to see you. Nice to see you again. Look at How you doing, Lucy? In this case, Mary Jo and Gary bought a beautiful home. They've been here for three years. And what's happening? Not one, not two, not three, but four tubs in two different bathrooms, identically the same, problem after problem. Good. Take a look. Yeah, come on in. Thank you. We noticed there was rust in the tubs. We spoke to the builder, and they said, sure, no problem. We'll come in. We'll replace the tubs. So I guess we'll start with the main bathroom. Yes, please. Well, you know, it looks good. Sure, everything looks good on the outside. They came in and tore down two rows of tiles, tore the tub out and put in the new tubs. And four months or so after that, we noticed it was happening again. What did you notice? We noticed that the tub started warping, and then the porcelain cracks, and then the water pools in the cracks, and then it starts to rust. You would have thought after the second tub installation, somebody would have said, let's buy a better tub. We don't want to come back here again. Let's fix it now so we don't have to come back. But no. That didn't happen. They said, no, we have to put in the same tubs because the manufacturer of the tub is actually paying for the repair. The vice president of the company and his engineer came and inspected our tubs, and they were baffled. They just looked at it and went, hmm. This bathroom looks really good right now. Um, I'm not seeing any problems with the tub, but let's go see the other bathroom. Okay. We got smart, and we noticed the warning signs. So it wasn't a month after those tubs were in that we saw it starting again. They ended up tearing down uh, all the tub because they couldn't find tile to match. Again, nice and clean. Tell me about this one. It's been replaced four times as well. Same as the other one. Same as the other one. All within two years. That's right. Okay, same tub, same tile, same look, same way. Yeah. And when they tore down all the tile and the wall, there was mold like crazy. I'd be freaking. I'd be I'd be down there picketing saying, you guys suck. Whoa, look yeah. at the mold. Whoa. Now, is this on this, this side of the plastic or on the other side of the plastic? This is on this side of the plastic behind the drywall. So, so the drywall would be on here. It. And then we said, well, what about the other bathroom? Because there's mold there, too. Mm -hmm. said, well, there's nothing there. So they refused. They refused to, they refused to open the walls in the main bathroom. They refused to take this down. That's correct. That's right. what, what was their wording? I'm not taking it down. I'm not taking it down. I'm not this taking the it down. That's the builders. That's the builder. Right. Why? Because it looks fine. It looks fine? Yeah. Okay. In this house, eight tubs have been installed, and nobody's learned from their mistakes. As a matter of fact, everybody's washed their hands of it. The builder said, we're done. You're not getting any more tubs. We're not going to keep paying for this. The warranty program, it looks fine. The field representative came in and said, oh, the tubs look great. You know, what are you talking about? So we showed them the pictures. Okay. Not good enough. Pardon? Not good enough. Why isn't the builder covering themselves and protecting you, the single most expensive investment in your life? Why aren't they standing up for their mistakes? Like they're going to say they are. We came in and did this, right? But they didn't fix it. That's Here a water we, test to show how the water drains. We've colored the water to make sure that uh, we could illustrate how the t how it is draining and, and where the uh, warpage in the tubs are. And, and then the water pools. And the so water pools actually see drain. A warp here. We see that it's starting to sink down in this area. Right. Why aren't they standing up and doing it better and standing up saying, you know what? We build the best houses and we guarantee it. Forget the new home warranty. We'll cover it. No one's going to do that, are they? Do you want two tubs or would you like a shower? A shower would be great. Okay, because I'm a shower person. I don't know about you guys. Yeah. Yeah. But we want to keep a tub because for resale purposes, a tub is very important in the house. So if you have two, why, why wouldn't we turn one into a shower? Okay, uh, let me get my guys, let me get everything I need. We'll open it up and I'll bring it back to show you what I found and let you know what I'm gonna do to fix it. That's great. That would be great. Okay. Thank you. Keep smiling. We'll try. Won't be long. And I like the way you did this. That is Thank really you. good. I wish more people did that. That just shows evidence galore and it stands up, but obviously it didn't help you enough. That's why we're here. We're confident that he can make it right. Please. Please. <laughs> Not fair. Like I said, they're a good builder. 
But anytime you got cheap, it doesn't matter who knows it. They could have sold this house and nobody would have known the difference. No one. And so we come in and open it up. We're going to gently remove this when I come out hack and slash. So we'll just start with uh, pointing at the mirror. We'll leave the light in for now so we can use it. Pull the sink, pull the toilet. Really nice. That's silicone to trim on. Yeah. Your toilet's been rocking since the beginning. The seat's not tightened. This is perfect example of production housing. See the sponge gaskets, Steve? Because they're, they're all used to wax. Yeah, because they're continuously pulling these things off, putting them on. Sometimes right. they'll put on before the floor goes in and the vinyl guy comes in. Right. And he takes the toilet off. So it's holding water? Right, it holds water. So now you have like moisture and you have dampness and it's dark and yeah. And what comes with that man? Mold, right? Right. Mm, nope. It's a cement board. Now I love cement board because mold is not like it at all. So we use green drywall and cement board in this one area, because this is often the area that breaks on the top and people see it split. Why don't they just use it the whole thing? No mold, it appears to be on the outside wall. This mirror wasn't gonna go anywhere, that's for sure. That drives me insane. Why do my pipes bang? Because they're not secure. There we go. See how the tub's installed? This is an aluminum nail, fine. The point is, is what they're doing is they put the tub in, drive a nail, and it supposedly holds it in place. I think it's the tub installation. So we see your basic cheap tub, okay? All braces, very cheap, thin gauge. We see the foam, and the foam is designed to serve two purposes. Because the gauge is so thin, they'll put the foam on it to keep it nice and rigid on the bottom. But they add a spray foam because they're trying to solve the problems of why the tubs are buckling. All right, so far we haven't seen any mold. Due to the way we see the plastic, we can tell that this was possibly replaced. We see how it was tied in with tuck tape on the corner. We'll see more as we pull this wall. Something that slightly bothers me. We do see great building practicing here, other than cheap stuff. Let's remember cheap. We see the vapor barrier. This is a six mil vapor barrier. Unfortunately, it is not down to the floor properly. We had the proper building wrap, which is required by code to come from the outside and wrap back up again to complete the seal at the bottom. Problem being that what we have here, because the plastic is not down to the floor, with an acoustic sealant across the bottom and tuck tape in the corners, it allows the moisture to come through. So this is going to give us moisture underneath the tub. Air movement, which is what we don't want. So this is incorrect. So far, it's not major. So far, I like it, other than cheap crap. You know, cheap crap, you're going to replace in the future. This is why I always say spend your money right the first time. There's minor, minor mold build up here. Very minor. But that shouldn't, we shouldn't be minor, we should be zero. Ah, oh, we see mold. It's already starting, you, you see that? It, eh? You can smell it, it's already starting on this side. We're gonna see the mold simply because we have an issue with airflow within the wall. What is that airflow? We're warm on the inside, we're cold on the outside. When warm meets cool, we have moisture. This moisture is gonna cause mold. This is, this is really upsetting me. By code, we wrap the outside stud to protect that stud from moisture. This should be top taped to that plastic. It's going to help stop any air movement, which we really want. To go to the extreme of all of this tuck tape in the wrong areas, wrong practice. Shouldn't be that easy. There's a bunch of mold. When you build homes, you buy it by the paint, you buy it by the floor, the cabinets. We're not looking at what we need behind the walls. This is the whole education about this. Why do we need this? So we don't have to come back in five times and still see mold. That's why. Let's talk about this exhaust fan. This is a good brand name. This is not a bad name fan. We can do a thorough test on this and more than likely find out it's not adequate enough to pull the contaminants out of the out of the room. Real simple test. You know what? Find me a Kleenex, please. Mike, it's not grabbing the Kleenex. It's not grabbing the Kleenex. What does that tell you? This is extremely light. If it's not grabbing and holding the Kleenex, it's not pulling air out. We're gonna replace that fan. We're gonna pull all the screws and the nails and we're gonna gently pull the plastic down. We're gonna put it in a bag and take it out so we don't have so many fibers in the air. Look how cold that is. That's extremely cold. We don't see the mold. Good sign. That means the plastic was doing its part by keeping the cold on the outside, but unfortunately did not stop air movement. You can see here we have a little bit of mold in between the, uh, it's actually on the surface. So it's more plastic. Yeah. Just get gloves. Okay, yep. so again, surface mold, same thing I found in the other bathroom. Obviously, again, they replaced this. We can see the tuck tape. They did replace the plastic in there. I mean, it's not a nice job, like the cosmetics of it's not very nice, but, uh, you know, they obviously wanted to 
I guess that's it. No, they tried. Honestly, they tried. Sean, this is all about the products they've used. There's nothing else. Yeah, cheaping out on the material. Yeah. All right, well, just keep taking your time. I'm trying to keep the dust down. Get it all out, then cut out the plastic, wrap it up, put it in the bag, get rid of the tub, make sure Dan pulls that out, and we'll keep that stopper. Let's pull the casing, pull the casing, light, hold the ceiling, cut it. Just at this point, hold the ceiling until we get the new exhaust fans. Vacuum. We'll completely clean it up, pull all the nails and screws, and we'll get ready to go new. The builder's good. Buy better stuff and tell the homeowners why you're doing it. They'll pay for it. Obviously, we gutted uh, both bathrooms. If you just want to come and take a look, it is a total gut. Oh my gosh. As we pulled this down, we found more mold. As a matter of fact, I, brought, I kept the pieces to show you. Not only did we have mold on the plastic, this right. was replaced, whoever did it last time. So we find the mold on the plastic, we find the mold on the drywall. The vapor barrier that's supposed to tie into the wall plates here was not tuck tape. So this is going to allow air movement coming through the plastic as much as underneath the tub, the vapor barrier was not properly secured to the wall with an acoustical sealant across the bottom. Mm. This makes it cool under the tub. So cool air coming in, meaning warm air. I thought I had done all of my work because I had checked out some of their sites. I had gone knocking on doors. I had asked questions of homeowners that had purchased their homes before and everything was good. Why did we have problems with the tub? Mm -hmm. The structure here is fine. There's okay, nothing good. wrong with the structure. It's nothing to do with the structure. Even if they said they had a problem, they said it was solved quickly and they were satisfied. The tub is the cheapest tub you can buy. This is why it was caving in. They even tried to spray foam underneath to help it. It's only right. gonna make it worse. Right. This is the number one factor in your bathroom, an exhaust fan. Minimum code requirement tells us we either have a window or an exhaust fan. And at a minimum, this side, mm -hmm. this size is 90 CFMs, 90 cubic feet per minute of air movement. I took a Kleenex up to the fan to see if it would hold the Kleenex. Wouldn't even hold the Kleenex. Didn't even grab it. Didn't even somewhat pull it. So here's the big fault of the builder is using bad products. You're going to come see the other bathroom? Mm -hmm. Same thing. We took everything down. The other bathroom was worse on the mold. We only found a surface mold on the vapor barrier in the corner here. But this tells me in no time at all, because it wasn't too long ago the bathroom was done. You're going to have a lot more mold. So good practice is, again, we see the steel plates in front of all the copper pipes. We want to make sure we don't have any rattle. We have the pressure release uh, pipes on top here. Everything is very much proper. Problem being cheap products. I still don't know if I'd buy a new home. I'm, I'm not convinced. Not convinced at all. Five, six days, and I'll bring you back to the show. Done. I can't wait. Okay. Yeah. Tell Gary I said hello. I will. We'll Thanks, see you Mike. Tomorrow. Take down all the wood, two by fours, take down the drywall at the back. Let's lose the tub board. Let's lose all the vapor barrier. The drywall ceiling, all the bulkhead. Lose it. What they did here was they have blown in insulation in the ceiling. They did the right thing by putting vapor barrier up, but what they didn't do was tape these seams. So when we go to pull down this bulkhead, they've attached to part of the bulkhead on both sides without taping the joints. So when we pull this down, this is all going to fall off. So what we're going to try and do is just tape it up so that we don't get covered in pink insulation. We want to keep that up in the, the ceiling. Otherwise, we've got to get more in. <laughs> Hard and feathered. We'll tuck tape this, and then we'll take the rest of it down. Tuck tape! I will use the same insulation, but what I'm going to do to make it easier on us and give us a good R value is I'm going to put in bat insulation in here. We're going to plastic it. We'll go back up into the attic and we'll push the blown in right over top of it so we have a nice amount of insulation here. Dan, I think I'm just going to make my way over there and start clearing the other one. Okay. See you guys in the other room. This fan was rated for 90 cubic feet per minute or CFMs, and we're going to put in one that's 110, a little better. It's also just a little bit better of a product. I just beat this 2x4 out so that I have a better connection. And then this slides right over top because I'm aligned properly. And we're just doing this like we always do to make sure that the uh, airflow is contained to the pipe. It's sort of moisture flowing up into the attic. I just finished shutting the water off downstairs, draining the system. We're going to move this shower valve which is at 32 inches off the floor standard, anywhere between 32 and 34 inches off the floor for a steel tub insert. So we're in the ensuite now. We're going to make changes to a shower area. So we're going to move it to a standard four feet center. And we're going to move it over a little bit because showers are usually 32. So we'll move it to a 16 inch center, four feet high, which is a very comfortable height for a shower. Oh my good God. 
This is why I always talk about the importance of putting the crown one way when it comes to your vertical studs. Don't just think of your floor where your crown has to come up so that it settles down to a leveled edge. Think of your walls as well, because if I have a crown, say this side is the crown, and it's out this way, and I have this one with a crown this way, and this one with a crown this way, I'm gonna end up with a water wall that goes like this, exactly what we have. I'm not even touching this one, forget that. Look at these three studs, right? So that means this one here. You gotta go the other way. Yes, yeah, so that's what we're gonna have to do on that one, is cut in on that push and put a screw in it. You see my guys do it all the time. They look down that two by four, find the crown, mark the crown, put all the crowns the same way, and it eliminates this problem. That's not gonna be enough. So cut a bit more out? That's a really bad stud. I could just as easily pull out this stud. We do have an electric cord uh, running through the wall. We don't wanna cut and do that. This is not a load-bearing wall. If anything, this one here is a load-bearing wall. Oh, it's way better. Get the new tub installed, start the drywall, have the fan in. We'll do pretty good today. Cut out here, out here, and move that up and out of my way. Reroute this so I've got at least a 10 inch clearance. No problem. Now we're gonna make sure we put a, a high quality fin set. This is a modified fin set that we want on the floor. And this will help on down our wonder board on the floor. So we have double adhesion, we have screws, and in other words, mechanical. Adhesion with the adhesive. Oh, baby, oh, there we go. Now it says on the directions, and we always read directions of everything, to keep an eighth of an inch in between each sheet. The idea is that when you put down the next layer of thin set, you'll fill that gap. I suppose it's going to allow for any expansion. Create a stronger bond. And create a stronger bond, very good. It actually bonds the two edges together, which is what we're looking for. the uh, acoustical sealant, we could have put uh, red sheathing tape here, which would seal this to the attic. But since we have our acoustical sealant, which I believe is a better, tighter seal, especially over the long run, we're good to go. We're sealed all the way around and at the perimeter down low here. I do not have acoustical sealant here because I have this piece of plastic continuous for the corner and down, I have acoustical sealant at the bottom. Now, the final phase to my envelope, I can use this across my vapor barrier and his and wrap it around. metal tub, foam bottom, but much thicker metal. So I wanted to put in a steel tub to show there is a difference between the tubs. So I'm gonna let Dan show you how to put a tub in. So pay attention, eyes open, ears. All right, sounds you good. should be able to do it by yourself next time. 15 and three quarters. So. Okay, let's play now. If it's gonna touch the floor or not, it's gonna give it that eighth of an inch, quarter inch, so that the tub sits level. Oh, okay. well, that's perfect. So we measure the back of the tub for the piece of wood, and we put the piece of wood at the back, and this happens almost every tub. It gets out a little bit at the front. It's hard to get the exact measurement. So now what a lot of guys will do is shim the front to get this level, because it's sloping down like this. It's wrong. You can't do it like that. The reason you can't do it like that, if you shim the front nail, your um, styrofoam pad will be off the floor. So it's a lot of work, but we got to pull this tub back out, Get that two by four, take it out, um, put some tuck tape on all the holes, and redo it again. Okay. You see, a lot of people put their board right down on the tub. Mistake. Absolute mistake. The idea is to ride your board on top of this lip so that my backer board is nice and tight against the tub and doesn't push out because this lip comes out further than the tub. This tub is designed to fit, yet we have a space here. So if you've got the board to come down around the tub, it pushes that lip out like this, and by the time you tile it, you can see down at the bottom, it comes into your tub. We we'll secure it in place, and then we're getting ready to put up the curry on top of it. We will thin set that joint right across here, and the tile comes down to the tub. Thin set is waterproof. Tile comes down to the tub. Water cannot get up and over the tub. If you notice, we are using a proper backer board. Now, I could use this drywall because it's a mold-resistant drywall as well as, as well as a water-resistant drywall, but we still prefer to have a more denser board in the back. Now, we have special screws. If you notice, they're a very flat head. They are not drywall screws. We want nothing in the area that can rust, that can fall apart, that can mold anything. Proper screws, proper boards, proper tiling, proper technique. So you can do this, finish this, do this, drywall the back. 
normally you'll see people try and go vertical, no matter where it's four feet on span and screw it in. But if we can go horizontal with no butt joints, we're not have to worry about the butt joints here because this is being tiled. That's the way we want to do it. it. Works perfect bevel on the bottom, bevel on the top, so it makes it really good for plastering. It creates that perfect 90 degree corner rather than being two butt joints in the corner. And then we plaster it, it actually comes off in 90 degree. Where we put in the shower tray system. Now we're cooking with gas. This is a concha fit. In other words, it's about an inch and a half here. Goes down to almost a quarter inch here. So we have a concha, so the water goes to the drain. I'm cut it. I'm ready to go with my dry fit. And I'm just putting down the uh, thin set motor here. So in this case, the best thing to use is a um, thin set that's fortified. It's got glue in it. The glue is going to bond to the floor here. And the concrete is what we want for strength. I'm gonna make a nice thick bed here. I'm gonna curb and my tray to lay on. Okay, I really only want to lay this down once. Probably the coolest thing about this product is that it's foam. It's not concrete, it's foam. But it's extruded polystyrene. It's foam made under pressure. So it's very hard. And look how perfectly conjured this just goes down into the drain. The drain line, drain line. It's not like if you were down here with a sand mix, a concrete mix, trying to get it all to go to the drain, messing around. This is a machine made, perfectly conjured drain. I love it, it's just super tight. And I'm almost done. I'm only gonna be been here for 10 minutes. It's okay to join this all together because what we're gonna do is now that I have a base, I'll be waterproofing the entire walls with the membrane system all the way around, bringing it down into a waterproof tray. As long as I use a membrane strip along this edge, and I got my water going to the drain, I've got no problem with a leak. Yes, another seam, but again, once we wrap the system all the way around here, it becomes one, and we're good to go for tile completely waterproof. The thing of beauty is not in there. So now when you're laying this stuff down, you're thinking about uh, your most traveled area, right? Since the door's there, tub's here. So we want to have no seams on the traveled area. So your mix should be uh, soupy enough to pour out of the bucket. What I'm using here is a 3 16 V-notch trowel. And that'll leave a pretty good groove for anything to bond to it. Line it up, and we just want to set it right down on top. I'm going to do this according to the you know manufacturer's specifications, which is to uh, put the corner strips in here. And this fairly involved process, but uh, we're going to like do a corner uh, piece in here and then waterproof the whole thing. It's pretty foolproof, but if you build it up too much, or you'll start to lose your your 90 degrees in the corner, which is very important. So this tool here, the drywaller's corner trowel, is a technique that I've just been using to make sure I keep a 90 degree corner. And all you want to do is make sure that you're spreading out, pushing out the thin set a little bit from behind the membrane the moisture in the thin set, the soupy mix will start to get sucked into the uh, dryness of the backer board and my curdy may not bond properly. So I gotta be very quick here, go all the way around, start the sheet here, go all the way around. So we'll start in this corner and we'll do this whole sheet from the center down and up, just the way the lines are going. Yep. And then up. Start at the words in the middle, go down. And once you've got that corner good, like you see that, you see that mortar start coming out like that? Then don't mess with it anymore and try not to pull it off the wall. So here we can see our overlap starting to take place. This piece is going over the corner piece that I put in earlier. And then we're gonna, now we're gonna do another one across here. We're gonna do the tray, and we're gonna actually completely waterproof this bathroom, which is gonna be wicked. See, this one here goes with these two colors, right? Especially the black. This will be the bathroom floor there. All right. The only other thing is paint. So today, we've come in. Now the uh, drywall's up. The plaster's done. We give it a primer coat so we can see any imperfections, which we see minor. You know, something so minor like this. I love it. That easily is filled later with a little bit of dry decks. And the uh, object now is to tile and paint to the tile. Uh, so we will today tile this area and the floor and start the other bathroom as well. Before you know it, sink, toilet, trim, paint, out. Well, I've already checked everything and put up pieces of tile and uh, marked it off to see how it would fit in the back wall. We should be almost perfect with the back wall. We may have to cut a sliver off on that side. Right. So I'll start on this side. Our tub is level. We've designed it that it has a 1 16th of an inch inflow, so we'll make sure that our tiles are just off the, off the bottom. We'll have to just. The okay. Same, same distance as a grub joint. Right. And uh, I'll start here. Once I get this area done, you continue, and the two of us will just okay. try not to rub owls. And that sounds good. <laughs> just bring, just bring a rubber ducky. Uh, no. <laughs> Now, something else we want to do, I don't care which way we start, the idea is to do a horizontal grid line, not vertical, because if it's vertical, it tends to slide down. Uh -huh. Horizontal tends to hold it in place. So you can start any way you want to get the wall. 
go that way. Yeah. Right. So, Damon, I actually want to start just above the tub, okay? Yep. The idea is, is that I'm going to push it down rather than let it fall down. So I'm just going to push it to where I want it. I see. And it'll stay there rather than trying to pull it up or anything like that. Right. right. Now, we have a mesh back. Because we have a mesh back, we don't have to butter the back of the tile. Ah, uh, okay. So we'll just trowel the wall, put them in place, make sure we rub it all in so it grabs nicely. Okay. Just going to put the border right there. Oh, that'd be nice with the other tile. Yeah. So what do we think? Two, three... I like three. I like three, too. I knew I wanted to add some extra color to it, so I thought, you know what, we'll, we'll create a border. This is a great solid color to continue out the tub and then break it with a border. And as we go, I may step back and add another one in, but normally to keep your border low looks really good instead of having it high. I really like it. The way it is. Just the one? Yeah, I really do. Keep it low. Mm-hmm. I'm going to agree with you. Let's keep it simple. Mud it right up to here. Head yeah. across. Two okay. sections. You mud, I'll tie. Last tile is really a pain in the butt, but it looks gorgeous when it's up. Now, this is obviously a back to the tile, and what they've done is, is it looks like they've painted it so much that our thin set that we use doesn't bleed through it. The important thing, honestly, is to take a look at it and see if you see any bad tile sitting in place if you do cut it out now. Because once we adhere it, we can't see it, right? Now, we're going to put up all these tile, we're going to let it set a bit, we're going to wet this down, and then pull the paper off. If you pull it off too soon, you pull the tiles off. Honestly, this is some of the hardest tiles to lay. If you want to look at another hard one, it would be uh, uh, granite on the floor because it must be perfectly straight. This is forgiving because it's less than an inch by an inch in each tile. It is forgiving, but at the same token, I can't see the tile. One, wow, maybe we can leave the paper up and freak them out. <laughs> mm. It's grabbing it good, I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah, no, that's a good trowel for, for uh, black black. Like any other tile, you really got to have a good eye to look at all your your lines. The real problem is having paper in front. I'm going to concentrate that I'm nice and true on this, and I can feel it actually by running my hands over it and making sure I have the same space in between each and every row. By having that, I'm going to make sure that I'm in line within reason. Because it's a small tile, we can maneuver it and manipulate it, and really works to our advantage. It's something to take your time on. We're talking three thousand dollars worth of glass tile here. A lot of money. This adhesive is just grabbing it, so that's fantastic. Why do I always gotta pick the hard stuff? Always, always, always. Oh no, keep it simple. Oh no. Gotta go for the luck, right? Could use any towel. Could use porcelain, could use slate. No, I gotta pick glass. Alright, your turn. I'm wearing square by quite a bit. I'm not impressed. Holy crap, look at that. These three get done in the order that we have it. Yeah. Not, not on the top at all. Not on the bottom at all. I'm done with that. I like that. Yeah? Yep. This wall to this wall is unsquare. I mean, our tub's right against the outside wall, so they've obviously built the walls totally out. Yippee-i-a. Here we go. This shows you the importance of any time you're going to tile is to check the room for square. How do you do that? Do you just take the square and put it up in the corner of the walls? No. Lay out some tiles, compare it to the tub, what's it going to be like from the tub to the outside door, and then start to determine how you're going to hide an unsquare finish. Personally, I'd like to come full tile off the tub, full tile off of this wall. I want two surfaces, so two walls that I'm going to come off of square. I'm not so worried about this wall with the cabinet or the toilet, but since I can't come off this, I now have to come off the tub and create the illusion that it's square. So we'll back it off, we'll do a cut against the wall so each cut goes in. Only a trained eye would see that it's unsquare. But we don't have a choice, because if we just went off the tub and tried to go off this wall, we'd throw the whole bathroom out. You notice, you see how I lay my tile? I'll keep it close to the other ones, push it down and over. Trying not to allow it to ooze up in between, right? Just gonna push it down to create equalness. Coming out for the toilet. Drawing a circle. It doesn't have to be perfect as long as it's under the toilet. With the grinder, we can just take the wheel and cut around and cut around and cut around and then knock it out. That's what I would like. I don't want to see a piece under the toilet. Big mistake. So we'll see how it does with the grinder. Because you've got forgiveness because the I figured you could use that thing and snap it after. That's part of it, but I'm just saying you're going to have forgiveness anyway because the toilet's going to sit on yeah. top of that. Okay, so this but one, just, yes, I like yeah, no that's more. right. Okay. You're doing great. Thanks, sir. Just 
more time in this bathroom than the other one doubled. Mm -hmm. Anytime you use smaller tiles, it's a huge challenge. You know, obviously, the bigger the tile, the easier, the faster it is. The smaller the tile is quite the opposite. It's the longer it takes. You've got so much cleaning to do to set up for the growth. You know, hours to do uh, patience of making sure every tile looks perfect with every other tile. It's so much easier with a big tile. But... So you're using sanded? Yeah, you can see here that the tile, that joint, once it's grounded, because of the tiles around it and stuff, is over an eighth of an inch. So whenever I can use sanded, I want to use the sanded. I agree with that. I don't want to see it uh, come up. Well, all we gotta do is make sure we let this set up nice, you know? Just pick the right time to come and sponge it all off. Uh, but it'll be strong, like it'll be like a concrete wall instead of like, you don't get any strength out of sand unsanded. This is the last day here, and uh, well, basically, usually the plumber's the last guy in, so trying to get everything uh, installed. Two washrooms, a couple hours, should be out of here. It's a lined toilet tank. I mean, there's styrofoam on the inside prior to where the toilet's going to happen. And what you'll see, a lot of homeowners will notice in the summertime, uh, the tanks with the cold water inside and the hot air on the outside of the tank, the tanks will condensate and sweat and it'll drip. And a lot of calls I get when I go into people's houses is my toilet's leaking. And I go under and I check everything, but it's just the condensation and sweating from the tank falling down on the floor. That's incredible. That's like a six and a half liter flash bro. Hey. Awesome. A little different? Oh, yes. Oh, wow. This is outstanding. All right, let's start. You already knew what we found, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what have we done? We replaced your sink cabinet, your sink, your taps. We kept your medicine cabinet because it worked for me. Uh, we kept your mirror, new light, new fan, new oh, light yeah. in the shower because yes, that I really like that. makes a difference yeah. for me. And I used a steel top. Yay. Okay, because <laughs> I wanted to prove a point. I could have put in an acrylic. I could have done anything, but it was really important to me to put in a steel tub in this bathroom to show the difference, a high-quality tub compared to a low-quality tub. How many times do I got to see it? Brand new homes done wrong. Okay, but are they done wrong? No, because minimum code requirement says they're not wrong, but they are wrong. If we're finding mold in a brand new home, there's reasons why. It's the products we're using and the procedures that we're doing with the wrong products. Tile on the floor. <laughs> yes. Oh, sure, beautiful. Beautiful. It does. And underneath. Like the way you fix it, finish it off with the trim. Yeah, uh, to me, you know what? That's one. important. Dress it up. It's, yeah. it's important. Underneath this, we have D trip. On the walls, we have Curdy. It's a waterproof product, as well as uh, underneath the tile. It's designed to take the tile based on the 200 year old theory. I love the product. So, this is 100% watertight. With everything else, the mold that we found, <laughs> again, is ridiculous. You're never going to see that again. Think like a builder for a moment. What does a builder want to do? He's going to build 300 houses. He's going to find the company with the cheapest tubs. Does it make sense? 300 houses? I say what? 20 bucks a tub? Think about the dollars there. The two by two tile with a little bit of a border in there. Mm -hmm. Keep it simple. Beautiful. Just give it a look. It yeah. looks so much bigger in here now. Yeah, we used to have the bulkhead that came down well, to about the shine of the shower right now. Yeah. It just, it's gone. And, uh, I mean, Gary's, the room just yeah, Gary's six foot two. I'm five seven. And you're at the shower head and you're kind of <laughs> <laughs> ducking to get under the shower. Love that light. Yeah, yes, I, do I love much. the pictures that you've picked. They're perfect. So far, so good. Yes. Excellent. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see the other one. The homeowners never win on this one. They never win. Even when it comes to new home warranty, their hands are tied. Why are their hands tied? Because as long as it's done to minimum code requirement, they can't do anything. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this is this what you wanted? Call. Yes. This is this exactly, is exactly what I wanted. What we did is we have a kit that can convert from a tub to a shower stall. So that's exactly what we did. We converted it over. I changed the colors just a bit. The light is the same. I picked black and white. Okay, just and really highlighted. If you notice, that's all glass tile in there. That's cool. Oh, it's it is. Glass. Wow. So I highlighted it with accents of black tiles in the middle. 
which gives it just a little bit of a look. Again, the same toilet curb. Again, all the waterproof products, mold free on the drywall. And I give you on this one, because the other one's a three way, the timer switch, okay? Or this wonderful fan that's going to pull everything out of here. No, the fan isn't going to be on all day. <laughs> is that quiet? That's amazing. New taps. Love oh, yeah. And a little more fancier. Yes. There's something that goes yes. with the black and white look, as well as that beautiful glass tile. Oh, this is wonderful. That's amazing. I love this glass tile. Do you? Oh. Yeah. Who is left holding the bag? The homeowner, each and every time. Until we stand up, squawk, make a difference, or at least educate ourselves and let the builder know this is how we want it done. I truly want to see the builder stand up and say, hey, we build the best homes available. I think they're going to sell better. Makes sense to me. The work that you guys did is just unbelievable. And we can't thank you enough. So I've done my job? And then some. Okay. Thank you so Absolute much. Absolute pleasure. No matter how you keep smiling and Thanks enjoy you. the shower. We will. Thank you I so much. I can see through it. I really do. I'll see you next time. You bet. As usual, you guys are awesome, Micah. Great job, man. Thank you, You're getting sir. better every day. Sean, the master. Thank you, brother. I tell Thank you, Bogey. You Thank you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Nice work, Dan. Danny, man. Nice work, Mike. Get a book. Anyone plumbing? Okay. Nice lot of plumbing. Okay. Good <laughs> job. Everybody have a good night. Well, Get some rest. Well, tomorrow, you're not going to believe what we have yeah. to do. We'll see you all in the morning. Take it easy, Micah. Thanks. Good Thank job. Bye, Mike. We'll see you. Say goodbye to the neighbors. <laughs>